Oh, hell yeah, I love this show. Sam! D Dean! Sam! D Dean! The scene opens up in Stillwater, Minnesota, where an exciting hot dog eating competition is taking place. Several people participate, and after some grueling rounds, the referee declares the results. Unfortunately, tempers quickly rise, and a heated argument breaks down between two participants. The runner-up accuses the winner of cheating, asserting that he witnessed him sneaking a hot dog into his pocket. That's not a hot dog, I'm just pleased as punch to be here. But all his protests are disregarded, and the winner, an obese guy named Wayne, is presented with a generous check of $1,000 as his prize. Shortly after, as Wayne gets into his car, ready to depart, he hears a strange noise that grabs his attention. Curious, he rolls down his window to investigate, but sees no one in sight. Just then, he finds an unexpected presence in the back seat of his car. Wayne tries to call for help, but the mysterious individual swiftly attacks him and sucks all the fat from his body. This leads to his untimely and painful death. Supernatural. On the other hand, we are introduced to two FBI agents named Dean and Sam, who appear to be unhealthily attractive siblings. As they converse, they are informed about the mysterious death of Wayne. They learn that the obese man weighed a substantial 316 pounds, but now he is somehow dropped to 90. This intrigues the agents, so they decide to proceed with the investigation. In the next scene, they arrive at the police station in Stillwater, rip in that sweet Impala, and meet with Sheriff Donna, who provides them with crucial information about the victim's condition. Donna reveals that the victim suffered from severe internal injuries, including a ruptured spleen, pierced liver, and collapsed lungs, among other ailments. Hearing this, Dean and Sam inquire about possible enemies the victim may have had. In response, Donna discloses details about Jim, the runner-up in the earlier hot dog eating competition, who had engaged in a heated dispute with Wayne. The victim also had an adversarial relationship with Donuts. With this information, the two agents rush to Jim's residence and find him training for the next eating competition. He is desperate to claim the first prize this time around. During their investigation, the agents stumble upon strange objects that give off witchcraft vibes. When asked about them, Jim explains that his wife Mala is a gypsy who has crafted good luck charms for him. After a while, as Sam is snooping around the bedroom, he finds a gypsy bag that belongs to Mala. Thinking that it could be used as evidence, he grabs it without permission, and the two agents depart quickly. As soon as they arrive at their motel room, Dean and Sam closely examine the contents of the bag, only to realize that it is, in fact, a hex bag. Not long after, their investigation is interrupted when there is a sudden knock at their door. To their surprise, it's Mala, who has come to retrieve her bag. How she knew the location of the motel is a mystery we may never solve. As the detectives ask Mala questions, she reveals something shocking. Turns out, she had an affair with Wayne, and they both met on regular occasions. Asians. Mala also confesses that she used the hex bag to bless his success. This is why Wayne won almost every competition he participated in. Mala's ultimate plan was to divorce Jim and run off with the prize money to Orlando. Hearing all of this, the agents are left stunned. Sam? Dean? What do you think, Sam? Dean? The scene then cuts to a local health club, where a woman is working out during the late hours. As she completes her exercise routine, she climbs onto the scale to measure herself. The woman hopes that she has lost some weight, but to her dismay, she still weighs the exact same. Meanwhile, the mysterious figure from earlier is seen lurking in the shadows, observing her every move. Then, at an opportune moment, it strikes her from behind, renders her unconscious, and sucks all the body from her fat. <laughs> I, th I think we got that backwards. The next day, Dean and Sam arrive at the scene of the murder. They uncover a disturbing similarity between this victim and the previous one. They both lost an excessive amount of weight before their untimely demise. Furthermore, the agents detect a strange mark on the deceased woman's stomach which they assume to be a suction mark. After this, Dean heads to question the person in charge of the gym, while Sam heads to the morgue to examine the body of the first victim. According to the gym leader, she handed over the key to the victim and left early, as she had a date to get to. In the middle of their conversation, the manager reaches for a tissue when Dean notices a similar suction mark on her back. He immediately questions her about it, but the woman becomes startled and doesn't say anything. 
Later that day, the two agents meet at their motel, where they exchange and combine their findings. Dean shares his discovery regarding the gym manager's suction mark, revealing that she had recently undergone significant weight loss at Canyon Valley Spa. In order to dig up further information, the two head to that spa, which seems to be offering a mysterious way to lose weight without dieting or exercising. Upon reaching there, Dean and Sam pose as personal trainers who are in search of jobs. They claim that they have years of experience in this field. To their luck, the the owners of the spa, Larry and his wife Maritza, buy their story and welcome them. They then start explaining their background and the unique services that they offer. After a brief conversation, Larry and Maritza hire Sam as a trainer, while Dean is assigned to work in the food service department. Later on, we see Sheriff Donna at the same spa, hoping to find some relaxing respite from her duties. She schedules a session with Maritza, and the latter introduces the concept of cupping, a procedure for losing weight. Oh, sounds like a sex thing. Maritza asserts that even celebrities resort to this technique as it eliminates toxins from the body. The unsuspecting sheriff agrees to the procedure without thinking much of it. But after she dozes off, Maritza suddenly sticks out her monstrous proboscis and starts sucking the fat from the sheriff's body. In another part of the spa, Dean is seen working in the kitchen, preparing meals for the visitors. Meanwhile, Sam finds himself in a somewhat uncomfortable situation as he awkwardly takes the role of a yoga instructor, guiding a class through various poses. This one's called the Downward Dean. But this turns out to be the perfect opportunity to gather more information. Sam discreetly observes the clients and shockingly finds that they all have suction marks on their backs. Back in the kitchen, Dean is overwhelmed by hunger, so he stashes a bowl of pudding in his pocket. He then sneaks away to the basement and starts enjoying it. As Dean finishes eating, an unexpected sensation washes over him as he begins to feel lightheaded and dizzy, implying that the pudding contains a heavy dose of sedative. But before he passes out completely, Dean manages manages to summon his brother, urgently seeking assistance. In the next scene, as Sam reaches the basement, he finds Dean lying down next to a pile of sweet potatoes. After learning about the drugged pudding, he confronts the chef angrily. The latter tries to claim innocence, but when Sam keeps on pushing, he reveals that he was forced to add supplements to the dishes on the order of Larry and Maritza. Later in the evening, Sam and Dean are having a conversation with Donna, who eagerly shares her joy at having lost 10 pounds on her very first day at Canyon Valley Spa. She also confides in them about her past, revealing that her husband abandoned her because she was chunky and loved food. From that day onwards, she wanted to feel pretty and desirable again. Donna worked hard for years, but didn't get any results. But now, at Canyon Valley Spa, she is finally fulfilling her wish. As their discussion progresses, Sam and Dean shift the focus to the mysterious connection between the spa and the the murders they've been investigating. They bring up the topic of the suction marks, and to their surprise, Donna reveals the same mark on her own body. However, she insists that it's a result of Maritza's cupping procedure. It's just a sex thing. The agents then inquire about the pudding, and Donna confirms that she ate some too prior to her session. Hearing all of this, the brothers connect some dots and finally come to the conclusion that Maritza is the prime suspect for the murders. On the other hand, the evil couple also finds out that Sam and Dean are on undercover agents. This causes them to panic, and they decide to get rid of the evidence as soon as possible. Maritza begins dumping the containers filled with the extracted fat into the garbage, but at the same time, Sam and Dean walk in and catch her red-handed. Now that she's apprehended, Maritza decides to come clean about everything. She reveals that she is a pistachio, a, a pish taco, a fat-sucking creature originating from Peru. However, she denies being a murderer, asserting that she is merely a parasite with no intention of causing harm. Maritza claims that her feeding on people's excess fat created a mutually beneficial situation by helping people lose weight. When questioned about the murders, she says that the guilty party must be Alonso, her younger brother who works in the kitchen. Meanwhile, Larry confronts Alonso about his wrong deeds and demands that he leave the spa immediately. However, this only makes the murderer angry, and he ends up killing Larry as well. News of Larry's demise reaches the agents shortly after, and as they inform Maritza about the same, she is left devastated and heartbroken broken. When questioned further, she unveils the backstory of her brother's presence at the spa. She explains that she brought Alonso from Peru with hopes of offering him a better life, but one day, he nearly killed a client by extracting an excessive amount of fat. Realizing that he is a ticking time bomb, Maritza demoted him to the kitchen, only allowing him to feed on fat stored in jars. Unfortunately, the more she limited his access, the more insatiable his hunger became, which is what led to the series of murders. The revelation leaves the agents 
place with no choice but to hunt Alonso down. So, they inquire about his whereabouts. Maritza, who is also looking to avenge her husband's death, directs them to the basement without any hesitation. Following this, Sam and Dean head to the dark basement in search of Alonso. As they slowly move forward, they come across bloodstains along their path. Eventually, they enter a room where they discover the lifeless body of the chef with his throat brutally ripped out. The agents are disgusted by the scene, but they decide to continue exploring for now. After a while, Alonso suddenly attacks Sam from behind and prepares to suck all the fat out of him. But before he can do so, as usual, Dean arrives in the nick of time and slashes Alonso's throat, finally ending his life. Following this, the police arrive at the spa to handle the bodies. While Sam approaches Maritza and offers her comfort, he informs her that he lied to the police about her illegal business to save her from jail time. Maritza expresses her gratitude for all that he has done, but Sam tells her that it's best if she were to return to Peru. There, she can be with her people and live happily ever after. Maritza is a bit conflicted about the idea as she came to the States to live her dream. However, after a long thought, she agrees. The episode ends as both brothers return to their bunkers and chat about their love lives and stuff. They just do brother things because that's what brothers do. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.